China's ambassador to Dominica, commended by Prime Minister Skerritt for his accomplishments as he retires, a committee to explore a health insurance fund for the region, and law enforcement makes a significant cocaine seizure. I am Idona John Baptist with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. Welcome back to the Channel 5 News. A number of important bills, amendments to existing legislation, and an over $1 million supplementary appropriation bill will be up for debate when Parliament meets on Wednesday. Andrea Louis explains. The Geothermal Resources Development Bill, which deals with all matters related to the development of the country's geothermal resources and amendments to the Sexual Offences Act, are among the top items up for discussion. Amendments to the Value Added Tax Act are also on the cards as government takes steps to assist the country's small business sector. In, in keeping with some policy decisions taken by, by the cabinet and presented to the parliament, for example, one of which is increasing the tax threshold from 120,000 as, as it currently stands in legislation to 250,000. So anybody who's, who will be, who's, who's, who's turnover will be 250,000 or less will not be required to um, make a VAT declaration. And this will save a number of small businesses um, several thousands of dollars annually um, in, in the preparation of their, of, of their submission to the, to, the, um, value, to the VAT office. Another talking point for Dominicans has been the Bail Act as concerns have been raised over bail being granted to those accused of murder. The Prime Minister has assured the public that government has heard their concerns and will respond accordingly. There has always been a concern by the legal fraternity about the, the bail and on what matters um, should be considered and how they should be um, considered when bail um, the, claim, the claim for bail or request for bail is made to the court. So we, the, the, we're seeking to, to, to define it um, much more clearly um, for the courts. The concern there has been for serious crimes. Um, people get bail and they're back on the streets and, and the, the, the country, the residents have been raising concerns about this. How could this guy have killed somebody and, and next day he's walking out on the streets, you know, like nothing happened. And, and I think it's an effort for the government to respond in the concerns. The supplementary appropriation bill is over $103 million, and the majority of this money was spent responding to the effects of Tropical Storm Erica. We have a supplementary appropriation bill, which will be a total of $103,886,083. Um, that's a supplementary appropriation. And a lot of his monies um, were money spent on responding to Tropical Storm Erica. You understand? For example, here, and we'll give details to the Parliament next week, the, the Ministry of Public Works, 65 million. The Ministry of Social Services, Family and Gender Affairs, $8.22 million. Majority of which went to um, the resettlement issues, the provision of pay, payment and payment of rents for everybody who's been impacted by this storm who, have, who had to relocate from their homes. And the list goes on um, and on. There will also be amendments to the International Exempt Trust Act, Tax Information Exchange Act, International Business Companies Act, the Tourism Regulation and Standards Act of 2005, and the Social Security Benefit Amendment Regulation. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. More lead stories. After two years and ten months of living and working in Dominica, Chinese ambassador to Dominica, His Excellency Li Jiangning, left on Sunday as his tour of duty came to an end. Prime Minister Skerritt and members of cabinet attended the farewell reception at the Fort Young Hotel on Friday evening. I would also thank my colleagues from the embassy. Without your selfless support and wise counsel, my job would have been that much harder. And of course, my Chinese friends, they all have made a big contribution to the development of our bilateral relations. It's a great honor 
for me to be ambassador to Dominica, representing my beloved country, China. As ambassador, I've tried my best to enhance mutual understanding, promote exchanges at multiple levels, strengthen friendship and cooperation between our two countries and peoples. In 2014, we celebrated together the 10th anniversary of China-Dominican diplomatic relations. I'm happy to see more people here are going to China to study or for training, and more and more people from China are coming here to visit and for cultural exchanges. The Prime Minister said he was pleased with the infrastructural projects completed under Ambassador Lee's tenure. Since the establishment of relations with China, over 500 Dominicans have gone to China on short-term study programs, all completely financed by the government of China. Because of his leadership and because of his guidance and because of his profound belief in this relationship which exists in Dominica and China, we were able to overcome those challenges and we're well on our way to implementing a number of these very important projects and programs. On behalf of the government, myself, my wife, my, my family, and the wider Dominican population, we want to say to you, thank you, Ambassador. Thank you to your wife. Thank you for the service to your country. And thank you for your service to Dominica. Because at every point, you have been able to, to respond to us in the affirmative on any request which you made uh, to your government through yourself. Other stories making headlines. OECS health ministers have called for a committee to be set up at the OECS Secretariat to explore a health insurance fund for the region. Julian Morris explains. Universal health coverage was part of the agenda of the third OECS Council of Health Ministers meeting here last week. Dominica's Minister for Health, Dr. Kenneth Daru, is now Chairman of the Council of Health Ministers. He told Channel 5 News he supports the creation of a sub-regional health insurance plan. We are with the revised um, treaty of um, BASTA that people can now move from island to island, especially where the government of the respective islands would have invested in centers of excellence. Move along with the flash of a card where you could access a specialized service in one of the islands. And we just decided at a meeting that, uh, that a committee be set up at the OECS Commission to really look into the, into the issue of the sub-regional um, health insurance scheme. Dominica, like the other 191 member states of the United Nations, has agreed to try to achieve universal health coverage by 2030 as part of the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. Universal health coverage means that everyone receives the required health services without suffering financial hardship when paying for them. In the name of universal health coverage, Daru hopes at least within the next few months there'll be quicker action towards a regional health insurance scheme. I mean, if you ask me from, my, from, from where I sit, um, I think this discussion has gone on far too long. Um, I think it's time that we really start talking about implementing um, because the private health insurance companies, they do it. I mean, you could, have a, you could be registered with a health insurance company here, Tajiko, for example, and it would be um, valid in the U.S., you know, or uh, you, you with me. So, so it's not like we'll be, it's not like rocket science or we'll be reinventing the wheel. I just think we just have to, the wheels, yes, just think that we just have to really put Put, put all of this stock into action in order so people can benefit because I, I'm sure you know Antigua would have invested in the cancer, institu in, in cancer um, institution um, and they're of course hoping that to break even that that they would require the patronage of the sister you know OECS countries. Meantime a Trinidadian health economist has offered his expert advice to the Dominica Social Security on government's intention to introduce health insurance for some single mothers. Government 2016-2017 national budget has allocated 5 million EC dollars for creation and administration of a pilot health insurance facility for single mothers and their children. Prime Minister Skerritt has said he expects it to take effect January 2017. Dr. Stanley Lauter, who is attached to the Center for Health Economics at the University of the West Indies in Trinidad, told us that sounds like a workable plan. We had some discussions with the social security organization, with the Dominican Social Security Board, as well as with the uh, Ministry of Health on this, on this matter. And uh, they, based on those discussions and suggestions which we've made, uh, are now looking at ways and means as to how best they can deliver on this promise by the Prime Minister. 
Just last week, the health minister informed that his ministry will assist the Ministry of Finance in implementation of the project. The idea is for mothers with children three years and under, and all expectant mothers would be eligible to register with the Pilot Health Insurance Service to have up to 80% of all medical bills associated with the care of their unborn, newborn and infant paid by the fund. With the NHI as a whole, you need to start somewhere. This is a very good point that you can start with. What are the groups within the population who really require assistance and support? But not just support as a giveaway amount of money. Support which then feeds into an experience you can learn for the total population. How to manage a benefit, how to negotiate with the providers, how to look at the bills that you get and screen those bills to make sure that you are paying for services rather than paying for administration or, or, or paying too much. And, and that's part of the learning experience for the organization, the Social Security Board, from starting with a pilot. Of course, the immediate benefit uh, will be the mothers and children who will now get much more uh, direct and uh, transparent access to a source of benefit that probably previously they did not have in the past. You're watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, the search continues for a missing 81-year-old man from the Kalinago Territory. Stay with us. Thanks for staying tuned. Two men have been on the run for the past four days as police investigate a cocaine bust. Here's Julian Morris with details. Police seized 19,000 grams of cocaine and a motorcycle following the anti-drug operation last Thursday morning on the St. Joseph Highway, causing the men to escape. In more police news, 35-year-old Leon Ford of Pottersville has been hospitalized after he suffered a gunshot wound during a party in St. Joseph on the weekend. In other police stories, one man has been arrested in connection with a robbery in Bath Estate. One man was left with a gunshot wound to both legs. The incident occurred at the Sonite Grocery Shop at 197 Cicero Lane in Bath Estate. During the incident, Nyka Bellot sustained gunshot wounds to both his legs. Investigations have led to the arrest of three adult males, Yannick Patrick and Nashon George, both of Yampis, have been charged with shooting with intent and Patrick Telemark of Mont Prosper has been charged with conspiracy to shoot Naika Bellot. And Steve Dorival of Tarish Pit is in police custody after he reportedly burnt the face and leg of a son Osama Felix and his son, both of Bath Estate. Dorival has been charged with causing grievous bodily harm and assault. It's more than two weeks since an 81-year-old Salibia man has gone missing. Etienne Charles reportedly left his home on the 4th of October for the Kalinago Council office and according to his daughter, she has not seen him since. The police reported that a villager had spotted Etienne on October 6 in the heights of Sensi, wearing a blue boxer shorts and a red t-shirt while carrying a khaki pants. In other news, head of a major regional fuel distributor says the matter of asking government to review its current tax structure on fuel is not one it would question. It's been a week since the price of gas at the pumps has changed, reflective of a 10 cent decrease from $10.67 to $10.57. The retail price of diesel is $9.10 from $9.12. Although according to the chief executive officer of Ruby's Caribbean, lower taxes would result in reduced fuel prices, he does not generally have a problem with government's existing tax on fuel. We normally do not uh, ask the governments to review the taxes and the fuels because we are very respectful of the government's autonomy to set their own taxes and of their needs to generate revenue. So that's, that's not a discussion we would have. We, we take the taxes that the government sets, and as long as they are equal for everyone, we are okay. Of course, if the tax are lower, and that it results in a lower fuel price, and that results in higher consumption, it's better for us. 
but the government uh, has total autonomy to set the taxes that they need to uh, set at the level that they need to set it so that they generate the revenues that they require to, to, to run the country. Nichols maintains that taxes are a necessary component in the fuel cost structure. In fact, he says the tax structure across the Caribbean markets do not differ considerably. We ran some comparisons some time ago. I have not run a very recent comparison, but what we concluded is that the price at the pump was within a certain range, very comparable within the Eastern Caribbean countries. So that tells me the pricing structure, that the tax structure is similar in the different Eastern Caribbean markets. And there's small variations from country to country, but not, not something that is so big that would call attention to that, would say, okay, one country is way above the rest. No, it's not really the case. I, I think the countries work, have worked together uh, to sort of harmonize, you know, the, the, you know, the tax structure to sort of have, uh, you know, fuels within a range of price that is comparable, let's say. During a rebranding exercise of service stations on island four years ago, Nicole said government made an adjustment on their request to allow them to cover their operating costs. Parliamentary representative for the Maho constituency has made good on his promise to the Canefield Urban Council. At the inauguration of the new council two weeks ago, Honorable Rabin Blackmore promised to help obtain a tipper truck to assist with the cleanup and beautification works of the council. On Friday, Blackmore presented a check of $150,000 to the council for the tipper truck. The Canefield um, Urban Council performs a very critical um, function and the people of Canefield, um, of course, um, take the, the whole issue of the need to keep the community clean very seriously. I'm looking forward to see the proper um, um, usage of that truck and to ensure the entire area in Canefield, not only the main road, but all the streets and the, and the other areas like um, up the road leading to Yanda, Upper Roji, um, Canfield East, River State. So I want all those areas to be addressed and to ensure that the entire Canfield area is kept clean. Therefore, there is no excuse to leave grass piled up on the side of the road. That is very ugly and un unacceptable. Another institution that benefited from a donation by the parliamentary representative is the third Maho Scout Troop. The troop received $20,000 for construction of its headquarters and Mr. Blackmore encouraged the community to come on board and help with this project. The Maho Scout Troop have been trying to build headquarters for a while now. And of course, a parcel of land was donated to them by Mr. Nassif. They broke ground, not knowing where the money is going, going to come from. They have begun the process, the project. Today we are um, making a, available to them a check of $20,000 to go towards um, the construction of the Scott headquarters in Maui. So we're leading the way in Maui trying to be. What I would like to see happen is persons from the community, those of you who can donate 20 blocks or five blocks of cement, whatever you can donate, paint, whatever, um, to, to, to do that. And, and if you're to do that, you're actually supporting our greatest legacy, our young people. Well, in tonight's Chit Chat segment, we're talking about Creole in the Streets. That's coming up this Thursday. I have with me the PRO of that event, Mrs. Thomas. Mrs. Thomas, what can we expect? Okay, once again, the NDFD will be hosting its third Creole in the Street Trade Expo this week, Thursday, October 20th, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We will be starting with an official luncheon ceremony between the hours of 9 and 10. And then throughout the day, we give the opportunity to our clients, our stakeholders, our partners to showcase the local products and services that are produced in Dominica. And we are asking the entire nation to come and spend the day with us on Great Marlboro Street, where you'll get the opportunity to see the products that are being um, produced here, to taste, to sample some of them, to interact with the entrepreneurs. And at the end of the day, you can place some orders from them, which you can collect later on. We are also going to have the Midnight Groovers, who will bring down the curtains on this year's event from at least 6 o'clock p.m. to at least 8 o'clock p.m. So once again, we're inviting everybody to attend. Great. So if you're looking for a place for local cuisine and products, this Thursday, Creole in the Streets is the place to be.
Sports is next with Kenny Williams. In cricket, after an intense five days of play, Pakistan claimed a victory against West Indies to win the first test by 56 runs on Monday. Batting first, the Pakistani side declared on 579 for three after 155.3 overs in the first innings. Azhar Ali smashed an impressive 302, while Sami Aslam supported with 90, Babar Azam 69, and Asad Shafiq 67. In the West in the Windies' turn at the crease, Darren Bravo's 87 helped West Indies reach 357. Marlon Samuels chipped in with 76. Pakistan in the second innings replied with 123, with no batsman topping Sami Aslam's 44. Devinjo Bishu picked up an impressive 8 for 49 for West Indies. Despite Darren Bravo's 116, West Indies were bowled out for 289. Next up, Sensei Shana Robin won silver at the 11th annual Shaolin Martial Arts Festival where over 70 countries participated. Robin has been in China for the past five and a half months studying the Wushu Martial Arts form at the Henhan University of Technology. Dominica, me and uh, Universal Martial Arts Academy has secured silver medal in our first event and I'm thrilled and honored to say that I'm looking forward to bigger and better things over the next coming couple of days. He says he couldn't have done it without the support of Dominicans and hopes to lift the standard of the sport on his return. So I want to say thank you for the support of the Universal Martial Arts Academy, Robin Rio students. I want to say thank you to the Dominican public for your continuous support and backing me up and giving me the courage and the strength to do what I do. And, you know, I'm ready to take the martial arts to the next level here in Dominica and looking forward to maybe having a, a delegation go to the 2020 Olympic Games. So as soon as I come, you know, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to get things rolling. The competition continues from Tuesday to Thursday, where Robin will compete in weapons and team demonstrations. On to football now, where Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers moved to the top of the points table in games from round 8 of the 2016 Flow DFA Premier League on the weekend. On Friday, in the battle between the Bath Estate and Exodus football clubs, Bath Estate edged out Exodus 1-0 at Dubna playing field. Carlson Benjamin scored for Bath Estate. On Saturday, Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers had a come-from-behind win to defeat Petro Caribbe Point Michel 3-1 at Benjamins Park. Kernan Lewis scored for Point Michel in the first half for a 1-0 advantage at the interval. However, in the second half, Bombers showed their dominance with goals from Mickey Edwards, Curtis St. Rose and Erskine Williams. At Windsor Park, Sajiko Southeast defeated Wacky Rollers 1-0, where Sydney Lockhart scored for Southeast in the 56th minute of play. Meantime, on Sunday, Central Cooperative Credit Union Dubna Football Club and Caribbean Cool Harlem United played to a 3-3 draw in the first match of a doubleheader at Windsor Park. Kasim Peltier found the back of the nets twice for Harlem, with Errol Blaise scoring one. Chad Bertrand and Rufus Pierre scored for Dubna, with the other goal coming from a Harlem player. In the second match, Middleham United hammered RIC Kensbro 9-0. Ashton Robin and Mark McManus both registered hat-tricks for Middleham, with Curtly Augustine, Michael Abraham and Shaquem Gregoire scoring one each. Back with more cricket, we can tell you that India defeated New Zealand by six wickets with 101 balls remaining in the first ODI on Sunday. Batting first, India made 190 all-out in 43.5 overs. Tom Latham, 79 not out, and the Team Southie, 55. Set 191 to win, India replied with 194 for four in 33.1 overs. Virat Kohli, 85 not out, and Ava Hain, 33. Meantime, West Indies women bested England by 42 runs in the fourth ODI on Sunday. Windies took first to knock and reached 223 for six. Stephanie Taylor topped scorer with 85, Shaquana Quinton 41, and Marisa Aguilera 32. With the target set at 224, England was bowled out for 181. Tammy Beaumont 57 and Lauren Winfield 51. The series is now tied to all. 
In cycling, Hayden Mills topped yet another event as Club 007 hosted another edition of Tour de la Dominique on Sunday. The event featured a race from Dublin to Coulibistri, where Mills clocked a time of 19 minutes and 44 seconds. Chester later came second in 20 minutes and 12 seconds, with Dylan John Baptist crossing the finish line in 21 minutes and 48 seconds. The race was put together by Club 007 and not Dominica Cycling Association, as was previously reported. In track and field, Tajari Prevo topped the performances in the recently concluded secondary school's independence athletics meet. Prevo finished with 24 points, including one goal and three silver. Next was Joshua Sejan, who closely contended with 23 points, winning two gold, one silver and a bronze. Meantime, Naomi Scotland was added to the history books when she broke the under-16 girls shot put event with a throw of 12.05 meters. Dominica Grammar School won the school's championship with 384 points. Closest to them was Casabu Secondary with 205. The Isaiah Thomas Secondary was next on 189. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. We'll see you in the next one. The weather forecast is next. Good evening, Dominica, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Marsha Alexander. We begin by taking a look at earlier infrared solar imagery and what it showed. Despite some weak unstable conditions, fair to partly cloudy skies were reported across Dominica during today. Now, taking a look at earlier visible solar imagery and what it showed. Some low level clouds which developed across the central and eastern portion of Dominica during the afternoon. Now, taking a look at earlier radar imagery and what it indicated, some scattered showers mainly to the east of Dominica. Tonight's weather is expected to be fair to partly cloudy with a few scattered showers and similar conditions can be expected into tomorrow. Sea conditions are expected to be moderate in open water with waves peaking near 7 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution. For the next three days, a high pressure system is expected to result in fair to partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers across the island during the next three days. For the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow, fair to partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers can be expected throughout most of the region during tomorrow due to the dominance of a high pressure system. Our international cities forecast, clear skies expected in New York and Beijing and partly cloudy skies expected in Miami, London, and Caracas. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 5.58 a.m. and sunset will be at 5.43 p.m. Please remember that we are in the hurricane season. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit the website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. China's ambassador to Dominica commended by Prime Minister Skerritt for his accomplishments as he retires. A committee to explore a health insurance fund for the region and law enforcement makes a significant cocaine seizure. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Idona Jean-Baptiste. And to all our viewers around the world, thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow.